Hey guys, Ballpark Heenan here, and today we're going to be doing a speed build video. Now building out the hull outline, I've essentially tried to make sure that I'll have enough room for roughly what I want, including anti-missile missiles, lambs, as well as anti-missile cannons, just to snipe them out from far away. So basically as much active defense as I can get, especially for missiles since they are a pretty big threat. And the lamb system will be able to deal with torpedoes, but since it's more likely that torpedoes will get through since the laser damage is greatly reduced in water, I'll need to have extra hull armor on vulnerable areas on the outside of the ship just to create kind of a torpedo belt, just to absorb those blows. And I did measure out the back, which I did have to expand, as you can see here. I had to expand the hull a little bit to fit the engines that I want to put in this thing. And I originally had planned for shields as well, but they ended up being nerfed. So in the end, the engine power or the extra engine power went to an offensive laser, which honestly probably worked out a little better. Building a ship can get pretty overwhelming. And what I do is try to break it down into pieces. What I've done here is just build out the hull. And now I'm moving on to designing turrets that actually fit in the hull. And I do have to keep in mind that each side of the turrets are probably going to have at least three or four layers of extra armor on the hull as well as some armor on the turret itself so I want to make sure they can spin. Designing the turret cap is always tricky for me. I never know exactly what I want it to look like. I have a rough idea but most of the time I just start building it out and playing with different shapes to try to get something new. And speaking on that, just messing around with your ship, that's how I've slowly developed the look of my ships. Now I mean I don't know if you could tell or not but I feel my fleet has like if you see one of my ships i mean 90 percent of the time you're probably gonna think oh, okay that's a bullpark keenan ship because of the way it looks and i've kind of developed a specific look of my ships it may not be you know the sexiest or anything like that but i like all of my fleet to kind of feel like they're designed by the same faction and i, I didn't start off with all of them looking the same really it's kind of something you you know, when you're first developing a ship or you're first starting off, you start building out the ship and just making sure it works right. And then eventually, for me at least, I slowly started to move into, okay, now I can start messing around with looks since I have, you know, some of the basic sounds like engines, the guns, and how to keep it from sinking. And then it just progresses just inch by inch until you get your own look for your style of ship. Because I did get a comment recently kind of like, man, I wish I could build, you know, a good looking ship or a original looking design. And really it is, the originality comes out when you're kind of just experimenting. Like don't try to force it, just, you know, have fun with it. Because uh, the more you force it, it you're not going to have fun. And if you're not, I mean, obviously building a ship, there's some enjoyment, but you know, you don't, don't try to push for that perfection. I found that the more I just don't care, the better it looks, if that makes sense. So the more I try to get, you know, a turret cap to look a specific way, once it's finished, I look at them like, okay, this is terrible. But for something that I've just quickly slapped together, like, okay, I need a turret cap, bam, and whip it together really quick, those, for me at least, seem to look better. Now, obviously, you may think they look terrible, but yeah, <laughs> there you go. Now, I couldn't really decide on a turret cap for this ship, but I do have three that I've kind of designed for this ship. One being more of an original kind of boxy-ish design that are on my other battleships. And then the other two are completely new to the fleet, and I can see where they could kind of make this ship stand out as like, you know, the new, the new battleship. Now, if you'd like, you'd let me know which one you like the most. And if you don't like any of them, you can tell me that too. <laughs> now for turret B and turret C, I kind of went for that sunken in design around the barrels. So when they elevate, they don't look as weird as on the A turret. As you can see, it looks kind of goofy. For the interior of the turret itself, I went through like 
five or six different versions on the interior of this and I'm just sick of it at this point. Here's three of the older designs and I think from comparing these to the newest it's a much bigger improvement. Here's a view of the side, top, and front of the new turret just so you can get an idea of what it looks like on the inside. For the armor of the turret itself, I went for four layers of armor in the front, one being heavy, and then two layers of metal on the back and sides, and then another layer of heavy. And here's a much better view of just the advanced cannon components themselves. Day 22. The Tetris has consumed me. I have become the Tetris. I've realized after this long and arduous process that there is no escape. I had to give in. I thought, how can humanity give in to something so simple, be destroyed by something that should be so easy? But that was it. It's the simplicity that gets you. I'll just make one minor change, you might think. And that's when it has you. That first step off a cliff into a bottomless pit. Crossing the event horizon, never to be seen again. Now here I just took the first turret I built and copied it twice. And then I'm just checking to make sure that they have enough room to spin. And then in order to get them... At the right height, I just cut off the top of the turret and then extended the cooling vents and gauge increasers and then armor it up. And I guess you could call this kind of the turret skirt, even though it's really not. It's called the superstructure. Don't tell him that though. But once I finish building this out, I double check again to make sure the turrets spin. It's always good to keep checking because it can be annoying once you're fully built with stuff and then you try to check the turret and it doesn't spin and you have to delete a bunch of crap. But then I do the same thing for the back three turrets, just copy and paste them over and then I copy and paste again. I don't, tell me what this is called, but superstructure. Copy and paste that over. Now time for the bridge, and I'm terrible at making them look good, so we'll see this attempt. <laughs> at first, I didn't really know if I wanted to make it a box or kind of give it some angles, but I was like, you know what, it's ballpark, so we need some boxes. And then skipping ahead just a little bit, we have the beginnings of an actual bridge and superstructure. Oh no, time for the mast. Hold on to your butts. Now honestly, once I built this thing out, I wasn't... Like... I have very mixed feelings on it. When I first built it, it was horrible. But after seeing it on the ship, sailing around, having a good time, I decided to keep it. And here I'm just testing to see how much damage this ammo will do when it explodes. Because it probably will explode some point in the future. Then I build a box that's strong enough to contain that explosion. Then the fun times of setting up the LAM system and getting everything, I don't know, would it be wired up properly? I guess that would, no, I mean, it's more like light, but sure, we'll go with that. Then a quick test of the two main lasers, and I still can't decide if I want to keep these because their primary target will be missiles and torpedoes, and their secondary will be ships. So if there's no missiles or torps in the water, they'll attack enemy craft, and I still haven't decided on whether or not I should just keep them fully offensive or keep them as a dual role. Then we'll put in these big boy engines with three layers of armor and one layer of wood as kind of a spalled liner and just a cheaper fourth layer. Then we'll be venting the exhaust gases into the ocean. Usually I don't do this. I like to see the smokestack or yeah, but I mean, whatever.
Now we have a quick lamps test just to see how many shells it takes to overwhelm it and to see how well our engines deal with the demand. I'm also looking for any gaps in our defenses. So any spots that I would need to place another laser. I almost couldn't figure out why I did this for a second, but I ended up adding extra armor right here just to help protect this turret. I had just enough space to fit in these anti-missile turrets, which was perfect, honestly, how they uh, were able to be positioned. Now when I say anti-missile turrets, what I mean by that is their primary target is going to be missiles and torpedoes and if there aren't any of those in the air or water, then they'll be attacking enemy craft and they have a flat ground in them so they'll be pretty good against air. Now these little turrets that I placed, I don't really think they're that useful. They're almost, yeah, I mean they're almost too small for any real damage i mean i originally placed them to fight like smaller faster craft but i feel like the laser or the anti-missile turrets can easily hit those and disable them so i might just end up taking them off and replacing with missiles i like how they look but i don't really think they do enough damage to justify them being there and then finally we're starting to come to a close we're going to do the bully testing which is this right here and you can see a bunch of torpedoes have hit and i know you love the wood bottom it's, it's so great very defensive really just a great stuff but what i figured out was all i need to do is put two layers of stone there and the issue goes poof mostly anyway and then finally, we see Ballpark lose all of his sanity and make his ship very shiny to attract all the fish. And here's the finished product with a fresh coat of paint, all fancy. I added some other things like the extra smaller guns, some torpedoes, anti-air missiles, anti-missile missiles, missile decoys, and a PID system as well as some propellers to keep it afloat even when the entire hull is breached. Here's a quick flyover of the inside of the vehicle so you can see where I place the internal components. If you were interested in watching the full speed build video instead of this style of video where everything's more cut down and there's no commentary, that link will be in the description. Hopefully you enjoyed watching my mental state slowly deteriorate. If you have any questions or comments, obviously leave those in the comments below. And thanks for watching.